Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Leo and let's do some more lead code problems today. Today's problem is called string to integer, ATOI. We're going to implement this function which converts a string to a 32-bit signed integer. The algorithm for this is, first one is the white space. We're going to ignore any leading white spaces. And second is signs. Determine the sign by checking if the next character is negative or positive, assuming positivity if neither present. And third, conversion. Read the integer by skipping leading zeros until a non-digit character is encountered or the end of the string is reached. So if no digits were read, then return zero. And for rounding, if the integer is out of the range of 32-bit signed integer, then round the integer to remain in the range. So that means if we have an overflow of the upper bound, we're going to return the upper bound. And if it underflows the lower bound, we're going to return the lower bound, okay? So return the integer as the final result. Let's take a look at some examples to better understand this problem. So if it's 42, the sign will be plus, so that's a positive sign. So we will just return the 42, okay? And if it's like this, we have a leading white space, so ignore it. And we have a sign, so we have the negative sign at the end. And now we have a zero, so ignore it. And we have 42, so the result will be negative 42. And here, if we got some characters that is not digit here, we will just read from left to right. And then we have a valid number, 1337. And then we encounter this character and we immediately return it. So the final result will be this. And for this, um, we have a leading zero, which is okay. So we just put it uh, it's a no lead, not a leading white space, so we just leave it right there, okay? And we have a sign here, but now zero is in our final result. We shouldn't have any other thing like this, so we immediately return the result, which is zero, okay? And here we have a non-digit character at the beginning, so we return zero immediately, okay? So if we follow these rules, we should be okay, all right? So let's write them out, okay? So the first thing is we cannot have any white space. So we, uh, the first thing is ignore any leading white space. So while uh, we should have an index, if the index is inbound and uh, our character at index is a leading white space. So in this case, we're just going to increment our index. Okay, so that's to deal with the leading white space. Leading white spaces. Okay, next for sign. So now we have an index, which is originally set to zero. And we have an n, which is the length of the string. Oh, before that, we need to do some sanity checks, okay? If like s is null or s dot length is zero, okay? We can simply return zero here. Okay, let's come back to the signs. Uh, we should have a sign, okay? Pre predefined to positivity, so the predefined to this plus sign. But we can see in our output, we don't have any plus sign here, okay? So there's another way we can just use one instead. So that at the end, we can return sign times our result, which is like 42 here. And if it's a negative sign, we will just assign it to negative one, which will give us a negative 42. Okay, so that should work fine, and we assume positivity. 
as a default. Okay, and now we can have a return value which is zero. Okay. So now let's deal with the size. So if it's inbound and uh, the character here is plus. So in this case, we will just assign one to our, to our sign and increment the index, okay? Otherwise, uh, we will assign negative one to our sign and increment the index, okay? So that should be okay to deal with the, deal with the signs, okay? Next, we have our conversion. Read the integer by skipping leading zeros until a non-digit character is an counter at the end of the string is reached okay so uh, as we said how does the computer know that 333 is 333 instead of 333 we can just keep a current pointer pointing to the current uh, digit and while we move on to the second one we're going to multiply it by 10 and plus this one, okay? So now we have the result, which can be multiplied by 10 and plus this current current digit, okay? So this is how we know this is 333, okay? So for this conversion, <coughs> we're going to loop through this whole string okay so while um, index is inbound and uh, or maybe character is digit uh, as dot current uh, as dot character at index so if it's still a digit we will keep a cur which is as dot character at index <clears throat> minus zero okay yeah and uh, afterwards we're going to update our result according to the formula that I wrote before and then we increment the index okay so here comes the tricky part the rounding how do we know if some number is about to go over the range Okay, so let's see rounding. If we got something like this, okay, very, very big. Uh, how, how do we know if it's out of the range? Let's say uh, our, our integer max value will be like this, okay? Let's just assume, okay? So this is our integer max value, but it still has so many digits at the end. So this is much larger than our positive integer range. So it is determined to go overflow, okay? So how should we know? If we have a result like this, and if it is already larger than integer max value divided by 10, we're going to return integer max value, okay? And, or maybe if we got lucky, this is just integer dot max value divided by 10, okay? Let's say it over here. But this current digit is larger than integer max value modded by 10. Okay, that means this digit, if the uh, integer max value is three, but this is eight, so we're definitely going overflow. Okay, so in this case, we're just going to return integer max value. All right, so for this, uh, I would say, uh, if um, uh, one scenario is our result, it's larger than integer dot max value, divided by 10, or maybe our result is integer.max value divided by 10, 
and our current is larger than integer dot the max value modded by 10. Okay, in this case, if the sign is one, we'll return integer dot max value. Okay, else if it's negative one, we'll return integer dot min, min value. Okay, so that sort of handles all the scenarios listed here. Okay, so at the end, as I said, we're going to return sign times the result. Okay, so that should be enough to write our function here. Okay, so let's write it out. First is the sanity check. Uh, if it's not a number, we'll just return zero. Next, let's define some variables here, okay? Result equals to zero, we have a sign equals to one, and we have n, that is s dot length, okay? So first thing is to deal with the white spaces, okay? So while index is less than n, and uh, s dot character at index is white space, we're going to increment the index, okay? Second thing is we're going to encounter a sign somewhere, okay? So if index is inbound and um, as dot index is, uh, is plus, <coughs> in this case, we're going to put assign one to this sign and increment that. Else, if index is inbound and, oh, if it is a negative sign, we're going to assign negative one to the sign and uh, increment the index, okay? Yeah, so next, we should be able to encounter some numbers, okay? So if, oh, we have to use a while loop because there could be many, many numbers here. So while the index is within range and uh, it is a digit, Uh, we're going to have our integer cur, okay? So cur will be as dot character add index minus zero. So our result will equal to result times 10 plus cur and index will increment until it reaches to the end, okay? And we're going to handle the overflow, the, uh, overflow here, okay? So if um, first scenario is result is larger than integer dot max value uh, divided by 10, or result is integer dot max value divided by 10, and our cur is larger than integer dot max value modded by 10. So if sign is equals to one, uh, we can just use another thing maybe. Return, let's say sign equals to one. If, uh, yeah, it's like ternary operator. If sign equals to one, we're going to return integer.max value. If else, uh, integer.mean value, okay? Yeah, that should be it and we're going to return sign times um, result at the end. Let's see. Looks like it's a pass. So for the complexity, since we're only traversing the string once, from left to right, the space should be n, and we are not using any other space, so the space complexity should be one. Okay, let's submit it. Great.
passes all the test cases. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please like and subscribe to my channel. I will see you in our next video.